Forgive me, Commissioner, uh, when I say to you that your handling of this investigation can only lead to the inevitable conclusion that there exists a two-tier level of justice in this country, particularly as it relates to Justin Trudeau. He, his deputy, and other members have responded to committees that no one is above the law, and that no one includes Justin Trudeau. And although no sitting prime minister has ever been charged with a criminal offense, the RCMP has left the door slightly ajar. And I don't have the actual verbiage, the words in front of me, but the report that I had access to when I questioned our current Attorney General at Committee of the Whole concluded that the RCMP would continue the investigation if they had access to further documents. I'm going to explore with the Commissioner what that means when he attends. We've already satisfied the issue regarding cabinet confidences that obviously was not discussed. And what does it say to Canadians? What does it say to Canadians under investigation? Can they simply refuse to cooperate with law enforcement? Would they have the same ability to shut down an investigation like Justin Trudeau did? by simply refusing to hand over documents. I think Justin Trudeau is the only Canadian in this country that has that ability. And apparently that's okay with the RCMP. I can tell you emphatically, Mr. Chair, that it's not okay to Canadians. Absolutely not. As I've indicated at the outset, the obstruction of justice charge is not a difficult prosecution. And I put this to the commissioner that I've actually, I, I've, I've dealt with cases where the police have investigated a historical homicide, have put together thousands of pages of disclosure, a trial that literally took maybe a couple of years to start, a trial that may have lasted 30 or 45 days, I have personally completed far more serious prosecutions than an obstruction of justice charge. So it really begs the question, why did they delay for the years that they did other than they had no political will to charge a sitting Prime Minister. Are they truly independent? Well, the RCMP Act may differ, than, may differ on that issue. Section 4 of the RCMP Act makes it abundantly clear that they report to the Minister of Public Safety. And it's the government that actually appoints the Commissioner. Begs the question, how independent can you be under those circumstances? These are the questions I get from Canadians from across this country. These are the questions I get from my constituents. Why did it take literally five years for the RCMP to conclude that there was no probable case to charge Justin Trudeau with obstruction of justice. And the convoluted way that they tried to, to demonstrate the inability to close out their investigation, from a former prosecu prosecutor's perspective, it was, it was challenging to truly appreciate what they were saying. There was a changing narrative with respect to their onus. They were conflating their onus with the Crown onus in terms of producing evidence 
to convince a trier of fact of proof beyond a reasonable doubt. That has been and never will be the prerogative of police agencies. Their sole mandate, which is an extremely low standard, is that is there reasonable and probable grounds? In instance, for instance, is there reasonable and probable grounds to believe Justin Trudeau should be charged with the criminal offence of obstruction of justice? There are two facets to the prosecution of obstruction of justice. One is, what is the actus reus? What is the actus reus? What did he do to obstruct justice? And I think the evidence is abundantly clear. It's unchallenged. It's confirmed in the, uh, the report by, by former Commissioner Dion that he had a political agenda. And he knew that there was a tool available to his then first Indigenous female Attorney General, Minister of Justice, to intervene in the decision made by the Director of Public Prosecutions not to offer SNC-Lavalin, who is facing corruption and bribery charges, very serious charges in this country for which, upon conviction, could have landed executives uh, serving a present, uh, prison sentence. He wanted Jody Wilson-Raybould to deviate from her prosecutorial independence and intervene in that decision to offer the deferred prosecution agreement. This was in September of 2017. And for those who, had, those who remember, and I know that uh, my colleague, Mr. Cooper, actually had the privilege of, of questioning Jody Wilson-Raybould at uh, committee, and that was followed up with her uh, writing a book I have read that cover to cover. And it's appalling at the lengths by which our Prime Minister crossed the line between interference, obstruction, and allowing her to exercise her independence. She made it abundantly clear to him during that first meeting that first meeting in September, for those who have read the book, and she may have, have highlighted this in her testimony, was to discuss a number of other issues, particularly her priorities as it relates to Indigenous matters. Justin Trudeau came into that meeting red hot. He had no intention of discussing any other issue, particularly Indigenous issues, other than SNC-Lavalin. He reminded her of a couple of things. He reminded her of a pending provincial election in Quebec that he felt would be very problematic if this multinational corporation was still subject to criminal prosecution in Canada. And more importantly and damning, I would suggest, he reminded Jody Wilson-Raybould that he was the member for Papineau, the riding by which SNC had its headquarters. And when Jody said, are you asking me to make a decision contrary to a decision I already made? Are you interfering in my decision for any impartial observer of what took place during that discussion, the proverbial fly in the wall, you would conclude absolutely the Prime Minister of a G7 nation preferred the interests of a corrupt corporation 
and wanted his attorney general, who wore two hats, which begs the question about the utility of a two-hat minister moving forward, he wanted her to make that decision in his favor and in the favor of SNC. He backed off, of course, and said, oh, no, no, of course, that decision is yours. But the damage was done. That was the actus reus. That was the act by which he then followed by PMO staff, then followed by ministerial staff in other departments, ultimately concluding with former Privy Council clerk Michael Warnock, unknown to him, being audio taped in that fateful telephone discussion, meeting I should say, in, in December of 2017. Commissioner Dion uh, clearly articulates and outlines all of the attempts to interfere in her decision making. Jody Wilson Raybould truly demonstrated the integrity that you'd expect from an attorney general who probably felt immense pressure as a member of the Justin Trudeau cabinet. She was mindful of her dual role and she held firm. Michael Wernuck came into that meeting, again, red hot. The purpose, according to Jody Wilson-Raybould, was to discuss, again, other issues. Those other issues were never discussed. Michael Wernuck came in hot and made it known to Jody Wilson-Raybould on more in one occasion that the Prime Minister was adamant about this. Now why is that term adamant important for the lawyers in this committee? You'll remark for those who practice criminal law about the second aspect of prosecutions. We talked about the actus reus. Now we have the mens rea. And that is the intent. And the obstruction of justice is a specific intent offense. So when Michael Warnock comes in to this meeting red hot and references the Prime Minister on more than one occasion being adamant that he is going to find a solution one way or another is indicative of intent. That is the only plausible legal definition of what the Prime Minister had instructed Michael Warnock to do. Now, Michael Warnock testified and would have everyone believe, as nonsensical as this is, that he took it upon his own self to initiate the meeting. And he was not directed by the Prime Minister in any which way or form to again put that final element of pressure on her, which is just preposterous. No one believes that. He lied. So when I take a look from a, from a former prosecu prosecutor's perspective, the charge of obstruction of justice, I'm mindful of the case law that exists in this particular area, and I can't remember the name of the case, but it came out of the Supreme Court of Canada, which set out the essential elements to the offense of obstruction. And it made it abundantly clear that success to the obstruction is not necessary. An attempt is all that is necessary. And that's exactly what we had in this particular case, Jody Wilson-Raybould held her own, maintained her position, never deviated from that position. Next thing you know, she's facing a cabinet shuffle 
again, a preposterous explanation offered by the Prime Minister and his government that it was because of the sudden resignation of Treasury Board President Scott Bryson. Was she the only high-profile minister that could have filled that role? I don't think so. No one believes that for a minute. She was demoted because she had the audacity to say no to Justin Trudeau. Take a look in history to all the MPs who've said no to Justin Trudeau, who, who proclaims, proclaims that he is a feminist prime minister. Another blatant lie. Let's take a look at MP, I'm going to probably mispronounce her name. Is it Selena Chavez? Selena Cesar Chavez. Chavez. Okay. Had great difficulty with the Prime Minister during her entire tenure. Ultimately felt uh, that he was pressuring her in ways that she was completely uncomfortable with. Again, this feminist Prime Minister showed her the door, just like he ultimately showed our first Indigenous Attorney General. Had no difficulty as well with uh, the excellent work that was done by Cabinet Minister Jane Philpott. I believe she was Minister of Health at the time. Her mistake? What was her, what was her crime? Her crime was supporting Jody Wilson-Raybould. Supporting her and suggesting that no, the Prime Minister was completely out of line. Absolutely out of line. She was shown the door. And then I remember, I wasn't a parliamentarian back then, but I remember how gleefully the, the Liberal government and its backbenchers were just gleefully clapping. On television. On television, in front of all of Canada. Okay, and Mr. Baines is smiling as well, but he wasn't there. But maybe had he been there, he might have been smiling and clapping as well. But I said to myself, what are you so damn happy about? What are you smiling about, Justin Trudeau? You're Canada's first feminist prime minister. And here you are clapping like a seal to celebrate the demise of a very strong, too strong cabinet ministers who had the strength to say no to Justin Trudeau. That's what happens. That's what happens to Liberal MPs who have the audacity to challenge the almighty wisdom of Justin Trudeau. So you're right. I'm, I'm absolutely right to have these questions still percolating in my mind why the RCMP did not complete the task when the evidence was right there. I'm also mindful of the fact that Michael Warnock had shared with us not too long ago that this particular issue was never discussed at Cabinet. I wonder if people remember around this table that actual piece of evidence. It was never discussed at Cabinet, yet we heard from the RCMP Commissioner that his request for documents were blocked by Justin Trudeau and the government because of cabinet confidences. Well, if there were no discussions at cabinet, then there were no confidences. So that's another issue I need to raise with Commissioner Duham this afternoon, because I didn't have that information available to me when he first attended. Why was it important for Commissioner Dion to interview 14 people, literally anyone who had something to say about the SNC-Lavalin matter, but the RCMP in their infinite wisdom decided to limit that to four individuals. Can you say that that was a thorough investigation? I think not. And again, when I pose that question to them and their nonsensical response to it, certainly didn't satisfy myself and I'm sure didn't satisfy Canadians.